Do those mystery faces in your old family photographs have you stumped? Well, in this video, I'm sharing you a brand new tool that can help you put names to the faces of those unknown photographs. Hey there, if we haven't met before, I am Lisa with Are You My Cousin? And this YouTube channel is designed to help you find your ancestors, grow your family trees, but not be overwhelmed in the process. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, you're in the right place. Well, as you know, if you followed me for any length of time, you know I have a large collection of old family photographs. I'm very, very fortunate in that way, and I do know that. But I do have some, and quite a few of them, that are not identified. Now, I've made good progress over the years of identifying the individuals in some of those family photographs, but, well, I still have those that are out there that I can't quite figure out. Maybe I have a clue here and there, but still, they remain unidentified. And as I pour over their faces and I look at those photographs, I'm studying them with everything that I have, guys. I am looking at certainly the backgrounds. I am of the photographs for any clues there, but I'm really looking at the faces too. I'm looking at the shape of the nose, the tilt of an eyebrow, the shape of an ear, all of that to be able to helpfully find clues to at least be able to put them in the right family line. And I do frequently revisit these family photographs because new information becomes available through my own personal research, as well as new tools that come on the market that can help me identify these family photos. Now, if you enjoy learning about old family photographs and getting your family photographs identified, be sure and hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. That way you will stay up to date each time I upload a brand new video here on the Are You My Cousin YouTube channel. Now I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to demonstrate this brand new tool related faces so that you can see some of the processes that I use and how I actually go about analyzing old family photographs. And I actually made a really cool discovery on one of my old family photographs. I finally am making some headway and getting this particular photograph identified. So be sure and watch and I'll show you exactly how I did that. Plus, I'll share some tips along the way on how I analyze those old family faces. We're over here at Related Faces. Now, Related Faces is a new tool to the genealogy scene, and it is designed to help us identify the individuals in our old family photographs using artificial intelligence or AI to get names on those faces. We simply upload a photograph to Related Faces, add any details we might know, and if we don't know many details, that's okay too. Then we sit back, let it compare the faces in our photographs to every other face in their genealogy database. Now we're over here at Related Faces and I wanna show you how to go ahead and upload a family photograph into your um, collection as well as explore what they have. Now, before I show you how to upload a photograph, I want to show you what it looks like. So this is the, this is the Related Faces homepage where we can learn about to get started. They have tips and any questions that you might have, you can find answered here. But let me go ahead and show you up here we have the upload we have the photos my people and messages etc so i'm going to hit that photograph and you're going to see where i've actually gone ahead and uploaded some photographs here previously and i'm able to 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 divide them into boxes so or fo folders or in this case little photo boxes virtual photo boxes so i have my unknown photographs there so you can see those and then say i have here's my haley family so i have one from my haley family that's in there and you can see that them there and I can go back. So I can divide them out and I can sort sort my photographs that way. Now, I'll be honest, most of my photographs actually are probably the unknown photographs because, well, those are the ones that I'm personally struggling with. So that's just my personal thing. If I want to add a photograph, it's quite easy to do. I just hit that upload button right there. Um, go to upload a photograph. This is very similar to how you would do what do it in one of your other, any other uploading program. Let's grab one that I haven't used before. Um, let's grab him. Now, I do not know who he is. He is an unknown photograph for me. So I am going to add, just put in his detail, which is unknown. I'll add, call him unknown man. Um, oops, can't, I misspelled that. Unknown man one. Um, I, I do know that he would be from the U US. He's, it's because all of my ancestors currently that are researching the photographs are from the United States. I do know that this, as far as the state is concerned, Virginia, I'm pretty much 99% sure that it would be Virginia, but I really am not 100% sure on the county or the city. So that's okay. If I had any other ideas, I maybe might put something in there. Other location information. So, you know, I could put possibly Pennsylvania County, Virginia in there. That might be because he absolutely could possibly be there as well. I don't know the year. If I did know the year, I would do that. I could do an estimate, but at this point, I'm just going to leave it blank. There is no photographer information on this. This is just like a little thing. I think probably done it almost like a fair type of thing. And then I'm going to upload it. And I'm actually going to go ahead and upload it into my unknown photograph. And so any notes that I might put here, I could add in here found in the trunk. Uh, oops. Again, I didn't spell that way. 
trunk of Esther Richardson. And that's important because that can tell me where it was found uh, in, let's put a location on that, about Halifax County, Virginia. So that's where it was found because that's where she was living in her adult life. That tells me, you know, gives a clue of, as to where it could possibly be. So we're going to go ahead and upload that photograph. And then it's going to take me over to the next page where it's going to ask me for a little bit more information. It's going to, I'm going to provide some more information that could perhaps help in the future um, when, as the program is working, I'd be able to identify him and match him to other people. So the more that you have, again, it's just part of that profile. I'm going to click that general descriptor right there. So it's going to ask me to do that. You can see it in the orange box for his for him. So I'm going to click that. And again, this is again any details that I might add. And I might say, I might say possibly a Richardson cousin out of Virginia. So very it can be very general like that. I could get more specific if I knew. Um, I don't necessarily know a lot. So I do know that this gentleman would have been deceased by now. He is a male, obviously. I do not know birth date. I don't know death date. I don't know military. I don't know a whole lot. And guys, that's okay. That's really kind of the point I wanted to kind of drive home here is that's actually okay if you don't know a lot. But if you can put any kind of descriptor in there that would, you know, give it a little bit, any thoughts possibly speaking to the providence of that of that photograph, then that might be, this is a good place to do that. So you can hit submit. And he will then go into... If I go over to my photographs, you will see there he is right there. And he should be in my unknown box as well. There he is right there. Now, one of the things, guys, when it comes to uploading photographs, I would recommend that you use a, say, like a phone to scan. Don't scan, say, four at a time. You want to screen just one at a time. I think you're going to get a cleaner scan with that. And according to the, the developers of Related Face, you'll get better results. Some of mine are not as good. They're my older scans, but I was playing around with them. So that's part of the reason you see that here. But for your best results, if you can scan with your phone, I think that's going to be, they tell me that's going to give you some better results sometimes. All right. So I've got it. So now that we've got people in there, I want to go over and see, am I getting any pairings? Am I getting any matches? And I wanted to show you, actually, let me go show you one of my photographs that I did. That is one of my favorite photographs in my collections. It's this gentleman right here. I have no idea who he is, but I've always been really intrigued with this photograph. I just like it. There's something about the eyes guys that tell me, and it, I see those eyes and I, I actually think, okay, I've seen these eyes before. These, his eyes are very distinctive and I'm like, I see them. I've seen these eyes before. There's something about him that almost has like a vague familiarity to it, but I can't quite figure out, but I don't know who he is. I've never known who he is. So I did upload him. You can see this is the information that I put over here on him. Um, again, most very, very vague. And so I went in and if you go into my people, and I come over here, I want to see if I've had any pairings with them. Now, if you see an orange dot, this tells me there's a new pairing that I haven't looked at, but I'm going to click on his face right here, because here he is. And I want to see who he could potentially be matched with. Now, they're going to show pairings of my photographs against mine, against others in the database, as well as the United States Library of Congress. So one of the things that jumped out at me as I looked at this was this first one right here. This is a really strong resemblance here, resemblance score here based on different points of the face that it's comparing. And so when I click through to him, here's something I discover. Here he is right here, bottom left on the left side, sitting down. Guys, this is another photograph in my own personal collection. I had no idea that this guy here was the same person. Now, I was like, could it really be? Or am I looking at kind of just gentlemen of the same line? But I started really taking a very close look at him. And I thought, oh my gosh, I actually do have him in another picture. And this, and while I don't know who this guy is standing up, almost 100% sure these guys are from the Richardson family. So it just gave me another clue that I can start to work on. But when I started to look, if you look at the guy on the left, you can look at his, look at his little eyebrows, guys, literally, I get this detail when it comes to trying to figure out who these people are. So you got, okay, they're asymmetrical right off the bat. That's one of the first things I looked at. I'm like, whoa, his eyebrows are, are asymmetrical. This one kind of swoops up. This one kind of comes up to a point and swoops down. And you can see that left eyebrow especially kind of swoops up. You can see it better in this button. So it swoops up. Kind of, this one kind of comes up and then disappears as if it's going down. His nose tends to shift a little to the left. 
my left, his right, I guess. Um, same thing here. We're, we're seeing a little more of the shift there with a little more of the shadows with that. Even the ears look very, very similar to me here. Um, unfortunately, he had a hat on in both. So I don't know hair, you know, curly hair versus straight hair. I'm not really sure. But I feel very confident at this point that um, I'm going to place this guy probably in Halifax County, Virginia, as opposed to Pennsylvania County, Virginia. He's with this gentleman here. And this particular photograph here was also from that trunk of my great grandmother, Esther Richardson. And it's also there's a grouping of other photographs of gentlemen all dressed similarly. So I was thrilled because I've been able to identify, while not this guy, I do know that these were that day, they were around some Richardson cousins. Absolutely. I'm so much closer to finding out who this guy is. And I'm thrilled to be able to do that. So super excited to be able to do that. I've got this photograph. I'm that much closer to getting him identified and I continue to see what I can find out about him. Okay. Now I mentioned when you have a little orange dot that indicates that there is a new pairing that I have not seen. So that means as things are added to the database, then the searches and the comparisons are updated. And I, I want to make sure I'm checking back periodically to see who she is. Again, I don't know who this woman is. I would love to know who she is at some point. And I'm starting to get some matches here. So maybe I see these and I'm thinking, okay, well, let me compare some of these. So I'm looking at these resemblance scores. Let's try this one here. All right. So I can take a quick look at her. I can look at this photograph that is in the database at Related Faces. And I don't, while she did match fairly closely, again, this was a, a bit of a damaged photograph, so it might not be getting quite as clear. I come down here and I'm looking, okay, so someone else has uploaded this in the database. This is in Minnesota. And I know that my ancestors were not in Minnesota. I also look, can look at the date at 1907 and know this particular photograph here, the original of mine was a carte de visite. So this would not be, my photograph would have been much older. So this would not be a match, but that's okay. Okay, I'm getting, at least I've got something to look at and can look at. So I'm actually going to decline. If I thought that was, then I could have hit match and I would have been perfectly fine. Now, one of the ways that this is to get the most out of using a program like Related Faces is you want to make sure you're checking back periodically for updates and new matches because as new databases are added and as new photographs are included and added to the database, then you have the potential to get a match that you might not have otherwise. So you want to make sure that you are going back periodically to do that. So that is Related Faces. And this is a tool that I have put in my genealogy toolbox to be able to, again, move forward and find more clues to getting my old family photographs identified. I hope you found that helpful to look over my shoulder to see how I use Related Faces. It's a really fun program to play around with, to really get to know your ancestors' facial features, to really get to study that that old family photograph and get and increase your chances at getting those old family photographs identified. And that's what we're after, right? If you would like to learn more about old family photographs, where to find them, how to identify them, be sure and watch the video on your screen now.